This video is sponsored by Board Game Atlas, your map to the world of board gaming. Medic, where are you? I just deployed the treatment. The city is safe for now. I have less than a click from the airport. Hurry, I need that last data card. Copy that. And route now to a charter flight to Atlanta, which I share with you. Perfect. I'll cure blue on my turn. Nice. I wonder what this game would be like in real time. Pandemic Rapid Response is a real-time cooperative game, meaning that gameplay is a race against the clock and every turn is just a few more grains of sand closer to your demise. Players take turns in which they roll and spend their dice to activate various rooms on the board, generating required supplies to deliver to infected cities. Dice can be re-rolled twice in a turn, but it's up to you to make the most of them. Any die can be spent to move your pawn to an adjacent room, airplane dice can move your hot pink Skylab to an adjacent city on the flight path, or deliver cubes to your current city from the cargo bay. But the five supply rooms require specific symbols and can only be assigned if you have enough to cover the current block. Once dice are assigned in a room, you can activate it by removing them and manufacture cubes corresponding to the current block. But you may want to hold off because you can instead leave dice on the board, allowing other players to add theirs and activate the room, producing a greater amount of supplies. One of my favorite little things about this game is that the block pattern is different for each room. The first block of water takes two dice and yields nothing, but you only need one more die to fill the next block, which produces two cubes. Electricity takes a huge lump to get going, but can be immediately cashed in and doesn't take much to increase beyond that. This tension between immediate benefit and risking the biscuit for a greater reward while under intense time pressure is the heart of the game. Well, that and curing cities. And normal difficulty, two cities are drawn to start and five lurk in the deck to the side. Every time the two minute sand timer runs out, you lose a time token and another city is drawn from the deck. Delivering supplies to a city removes it from the board and more importantly, every city you cure earns another precious time token. When all the cities in the deck have been revealed and cured, players win the game. But let's get real, this is a cooperative game. So instead of talking about winning, let's talk about all the ways that you're going to lose. And to do that, I've enlisted the help of my most pandemic obsessed friends, Sarah and Miko. As a real time game, one of your biggest concerns is time. You've got this timer here, it's running down all the time. You gotta keep track of that. Sometimes it's easier just to set a timer or something else that'll beep when it runs out. But with the timer, when it runs out, you remove a time token. If it runs out and you don't have any time tokens left, you lose the game. The other way to lose the game is when you produce resources. Every time you produce resources, you roll these dice to determine how much waste is being created. That waste, if it gets out of hand, will end the game. You can, on your turn in that room, use unique dice to recycle that waste. However, in the chaos of the game, it's pretty easy to lose track of that scale. In spite of this game doing its best to do you in, you do have a degree of help available to you primarily through the character cards. Every player is going to have a unique character and these characters have unique abilities like being able to reserve a die that can be used by anyone or place a single die in a holding cell that requires two or more or even being able to move extra spaces per die use. Success in this game is dependent on being able to capitalize on these character powers. Overall, it's a simple game, but it's a game of desperation, and if the stakes aren't high enough for you, there's the Crisis Card variant. Crisis cards are flipped every time you spend a time token before flipping the timer again. These can have immediate effects like discarding dice from the board, modifiers requiring extra supply deliveries on nearby cities, or persistent effects like turbulence making it so you have to spend two dice to move until the next timer flip. These are thematic, these are terrifying, and these are awesome. So last night I had these guys come over and we played five games of this back to back and it was exhilarating and terrifying. What did you guys think of this game? Oh my gosh, talk about jumping in the deep end. Yeah. You're learning fast. Fast paced, blood pressure was high, the heart rate was high, all in a way that a good fast paced um, game should. Did you feel like it was fairly easy to learn? We kind of jumped into the deep end. We had one explanation and kind of a run through the rules and then just hopped in. It's definitely worth starting on novice. It, uh, 
<laughs> going in like that, you know, you're learning and there isn't, there's not time to stop and discuss. You're, As a you're, matter of fact, you can't stop and discuss. That's the whole point. <laughs> you're you're, you're kind of going. There was some familiarity, but other than that, oh boy, it's all new. Yeah. What I really loved is that when you're hopping in and when you're playing, it becomes intuitive immediately that you need to take advantage of every die if possible uh, you need to make your turn as quick as possible and you need to focus on one thing what did you feel strategically about the game by the time that we were done well it's definitely not a um, casual game you know you need to be planning your turn when the person before you or maybe even the person before that is playing I certainly enjoyed the game immensely, but I'll admit I like a slower strategy. I, I like the noodling through the best course of action and then executing those actions. And that is not the case in this game. It's fast, it's furious, it's by the seat of your pants, which has its own charm. You know, when that timer runs out, you can't talk strategy, but you can breathe, which is kind of nice. And there's that kind of like <laughs> moment like, oh, okay, okay, okay. All right, flip the timer, here we go again. So in spite of the fact that we don't have time to really analyze what everyone else is doing, I still felt like we had a degree of cooperation going on. Like we were able to have table talk. I was asking for help and direction on my turns when I wasn't able to focus on what rooms needed extra support or maybe the waste level. You have to have a team. And I think it came together pretty quickly. It almost felt more like a sport than a game in a way where there's there's no waiting. You're, you're reacting to this thing all the time, but you got to pay attention to what you're doing and what everyone else is doing. But then you have to work together as a team for that. Overall, I had a blast. I think throughout all five games, even when we lost very quickly <laughs> on one of those due to waste, this was such an enjoyable experience and one of the best and tightest real-time games that I've ever played. What are your ending thoughts on the game after our madcap adventure last night? Well, you know, we stayed up way past my bedtime, but I still couldn't get to sleep after because of the heart rate. You're just dumb, 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 dumb. <laughs> it's not a relaxing chill out game um you know some games you have to be paying attention and this this one's it there's no downtime yeah i thoroughly enjoyed it it's unlike the games we normally play um so i think it stretched some different brain muscles um and i had a blast Rapid Response is a tight package with unique gameplay and great components. It's one of the most approachable real-time games that I've played, feeling closer to a traditional game with real-time elements than a wacky party game the genre is known for. This is largely because players aren't all acting at the same time. It's more of a relay race where you're waiting for the handoff. It scales well from two to four players, and the fact that each game takes only about 20 furious minutes is refreshing. That is, if you last that long. But there are a few things worth mentioning. First, the timer is kind of lame. Having a visual is nice, but with no audio cue to flip, switching to a phone or egg timer is the way to go. Second, as of right now, this is a Target exclusive in the US. This doesn't impact the gameplay, but if it's sold retail, we should be able to support our friendly local game store. And finally, this is a completely different type of game than Pandemic. Don't go in expecting to like one just because you like the other. We like both, but these are different strains altogether. So if you're looking for a fast, intense cooperative game, or you just want to dip your toes into the world of real-time gaming, then the Cardboard Herald and Sarah and Miko recommend Pandemic Rapid Response. That is the Cardboard Herald's review. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll talk to you next time. Bye. See ya. If you enjoyed this video, we have all kinds of other reviews, interviews, and recommendations via writing, podcasts, and video here on our channel and website cardboardherald.com. Our content is audience supported, so if you want to show your support, please visit our Patreon. Thank you so much for watching. This has been the Cardboard Herald.